Good afternoon. So welcome back to our series on uh, why don't you follow Jesus Christ. So um, this is the fourth video on this uh, installment. I think I'm going to leave it here at four. Um, and uh, if you want, you can go and look at the other, the first three that I did. And the first one was on some, I did some of the reasons why people don't or choose not to follow Christ or don't believe in him. Uh, the first one was uh, lack of faith or unbelief, which is kind of obvious. Uh, the second one was lack of love. It doesn't mean that these people don't love. Go watch the video so, so you can, you know, exactly what kind of love or what, I, what I'm talking about in, in regards to lack of love. Uh, the third one was hurtfulness. Um, I did that, I think it was last Thursday or Friday. And it's about, um, you know, a lot of people won't come to the Lord when they're hurt. When they're hurt, whether by other people, whether they're hurt um, through illness, through loss, through whatever it is. Go watch the video and you'll see what I mean on, on hurtfulness. And this last one, this fourth one, I want to do it on... I was trying to think of what title to come up with this. Um, and I had false teachers, um, but I, I, it wasn't the right one. So I'm going to title it False Christians. Um, I have it in quotes, false Christians. And what do I mean by false Christians? Um, so often I've heard people who um, don't believe in Jesus Christ or haven't surrendered their hearts to Jesus Christ um, and say to me, and uh, some of these people have been close, people who are close to me. And they've said to me, why should I go to church? Why should I become a follower of Jesus Christ? I see the people in your church or in other churches or in the world, how they are. And they're no different than me. I see them going to places that I go or doing things that I do or saying things that I say or behaving in a way that I say. The only difference between them and me is they go to church. And you know what? Um, that kind of saddens me because as, as a Christian, the world is looking at us, Okay. And sadly, much of the world is looking at us, waiting for us to stumble so that they can say exactly those things. Well, if you're a Christian and you're going into bars or you're going to strip joints or you're having an extra marital affair, um, I'm doing all those things. And why should I follow Christ if I'm doing the same things that you're doing? So our testimony, okay, and our witness, okay, which is what brought us to the Lord. And what, how the Lord has changed us, okay? A witness should be true. Because you see a witness when they go to court, in the courtroom, when we bring a witness, you're expecting that person to tell the truth. It used to be a day when they used to tell the truth or be under, you know, uh, perjury, or they can be, you know, held in content and even go to jail. Nowadays, it's a little, little different. In the world, in the worldly, political, in the worldly uh, system of, of uh, judiciary. But in God's world, in God's eyes, Okay, things never change. It's the same. So our witness should be such that instead of chasing people away from Jesus, we should be bringing them back. So if you're not a believer in Christ, don't focus on those people. Okay, it's it's not about them. Your relationship with the Lord is not about them. Um, I might have written some of this on here, and I'll probably excuse me if I repeat myself, but it's not about them. And it's important for us to to know what examples we should give and it's important for you who don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ who to look to okay and and, I, and I'll say this I'm the first one to say this don't look to me don't look to me because you're going to be very disappointed but in first Peter chapter 2 verse 21 it says Jesus Christ is our example and we should follow in his steps okay we should follow in Jesus steps not in my pastor's step, not in my step, not in my friend's step, in nobody's steps. You should follow in the steps of Jesus Christ, okay? And in Romans 10, 17, it says, faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. So how do you know what steps you're to take? How do you know how you're to behave as a Christian? Or how do you know who is your example as a Christian, as a new believer? Who is your example? And it's the Word of God. It's Jesus Christ himself who is the Word of God. We read in, in, in John chapter 1 where it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God, and Jesus is the Word. So we're, we're reminded of that. 
So another thing I want to share with you guys really quick is to not use other people's examples. If we see the story, the account of the Samaritan woman by the well, and you can go read this in uh, John chapter 4. Um, in verse 39, I'm going to read just verse 39, but you read the whole account how Jesus encounters this, this Samaritan woman at the well, okay, while she's going to get water and he's there waiting for his disciples who went to get food in town and he's waiting there and he starts talking to her and they start talking about water and he's telling her that he can give her the living waters, you know, not, not physical water, but spiritual water. So anyway, so go read that. So Jesus tells this woman everything that she's done. So this woman, okay, I'm going to read verse 39. It says, And many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the word that the woman said to them. And she said to them, He told me everything I ever did. So she knew. And so the most important verse in this whole account to me, as somebody who doesn't have a relationship with Jesus, if you don't, is this. In verse 42, it's, they said, Now we believe. Not because of what you said, being the woman, not because of what the woman said, for we ourselves have heard him and we know that indeed he is the Christ, the savior of the world. So they heard what the woman said, but they also went to Jesus and they asked him to come into their town and come and stay with them. And he did it. And he spoke to them beautifully as he always does to those who open the doors of their, their homes, their lives, their minds to them. And he'll speak to you. And they said at the end, their conclusion was they believed not just because of what the woman said, who the woman was a witness, but they believed because they encountered personally Jesus Christ. And so that's how you get to believe and to know Jesus Christ by spending time in his word, by turning to him through his word and he'll reveal himself to you. So I want to close with this. I want to make this video short. I want to close with this. If you see Christians out there walking in a manner that's it, it, that's it shouldn't be, you know, in a manner that a Christian shouldn't walk, you know, if they're doing or saying things that they shouldn't be saying, um, don't don't judge them. That's between them and the Lord. Don't judge them, um, because we need to remember we all live in the flesh, and this flesh many times is going to let us down. Okay, it's going to betray us. Um, the things of this world are going to entice us and try to pull our attention away from from the Lord into those those things that are you know that the the enemy makes it look nice and good and nice and you know tasty and you know really really presentable just as um he did to eve in the garden with the with the apple and so we need to remember that you know they're they're human beings just like us and they're gonna stumble we i'm, I'm talking to myself too we're gonna stumble just like anybody else but the difference is this as believers our goal should be to be christ-like to be like jesus Yes, we'll never get there until we're in glory with him. We'll never be in his likeness until we're with him. But our goal should always be to strive to be like him. And the more we strive and the more we hunger and desire to be like him, the less that those enticements that the enemies puts before us has any bearing on us, can even affect us. And and you'll see as time goes on, less and less, you'll, you'll, you'll desire more the things of the Lord, more the things of God and less the things of this world. And that's how it is. So, you know, my brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, if you see somebody out there who, who's doing things, you know, if you see a believer out there who's doing things or saying things that shouldn't be, you know, whether you're a believer now or not, you should, in love, say to them, listen, brother, you know, is that how a Christian should be talking? You know, is that how a Christian should be acting or behaving? Because I've had people say it to me once or twice, and it's good. I don't get offended, but I'm like, oh, it makes me like think, oh, wait a minute. Yes, forgive me, Lord. Forgive me for acting like that, for saying that, or for even thinking like that. And the Lord will forgive you. And just, we shouldn't continue in that, though. Because if you're continuing in the same things, and I, I say here, some people mature quicker than others in Christ like this, okay? Um, some people have almost instant changes when they, when they encounter the Lord. Most people, it takes a while. But our change is for our whole life. We never achieve Christ-likeness right away. It's a process. It's something that takes us through our whole life. But if you're not seeing any change in your life, if you're not seeing any change, any growth, if you're desiring the things of this world just as much today as you were, you know, before you met the Lord, then there's something wrong there. You really need to examine your relationship with the Lord and, and ask the Lord, say, Lord, what am I doing wrong? 
Reveal to me the things that are hindering me, that are keeping me from growing in Christ likeness, to be more like you, to love the world more like you, and to behave in a manner that's right before your eyes. Not before the world, but before the Father, okay? So it's very important that we remember that. We might think that we're doing some things in, in secret where others don't see us, but God sees us. So we can't fool him. We can fool other people, but we can't fool him. And the last thing I want to end with is this. Remember this. Your relationship with Jesus Christ is yours. It's not mine. It's not your wife's. It's not your children. It's not your pastor's. It's your own personal relationship with him. So whatever somebody else is doing, whatever they're saying, whether it's not Christ-like, whether it's in a manner that a Christian shouldn't be, you shouldn't be behaving, don't worry about them. Just worry about your personal walk and your relationship with the Lord. So anyway, I hope that this series helped you, um, either if you're a believer or not. Um, you can just, you know, share this with your friends. You know, subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And if you haven't um, given your life to Jesus Christ, I pray that you would consider it. And, and consider it today. Because tomorrow is not guaranteed. Consider seeking the Lord today. You know, all you have to do is just admit that you're a sinner as we all are. Confess your sins before the Lord. You don't have to go to some church. You don't have to go to some priest. You don't have to go to some pastor or anybody else. That's the beauty about having a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's a personal relationship. So you just go before him and just confess your sins before him and ask him to forgive you and ask him to come into your heart, into your life and to be Lord of your life and to lead you and guide you in everything and anything that you do. And I guarantee you, if you're sincere in this, he will, he'll make himself available, aware and present to you. God bless you, my friends.